Hi, my name is Houston. This is Yami and welcome back to another video. I just got done recording a TikTok for the homies at Focus Fuel. Full disclosure, they did not pay me to say anything on my YouTube channel, but these things, these little gummies, I eat them before uh, I go on runs. I go to the gym and all that. They got 50 milligrams of caffeine in them. And honestly, they're the best. As somebody with a, what seems like small bladder, I feel like when I'm just constantly chugging, you know, I love Celsius. I love coffee. I love all those things, but I can only drink so much before I got to pee in the middle of a long run. That's kind of where the advantage is for like just a little gummy. Anyway, come on, dude. You know what we're playing? Yami, do you know what we're playing? Of course, dude. We're playing Black Ops 6. All right, here we are on the game of all time. Call of Duty 26 Black Ops 6. I saw this tweet about how uh, Call of Duty, or at least Black Ops, is entering its uh, like horror movie arc where you could be like, yeah, the sixth one in the franchise is the best one. Isn't it funny how like a, a first version of a movie will be it's like classic, like um, Alien, for instance. I love Alien. I'm doing I'm doing the Trump hands for some reason, the accordion hands. That's how you can tell I'm lying. No, uh, Alien is fantastic. And then I'm not crazy about uh, the ones after that. But then Prometheus in what was that? 2012 Prometheus banger cinema amazing i even love covenant even though i'm not a fan of the direction that ridley scott took with david's whole character arc i hope that if we get a third movie he really tries to reel all that in instead of you know doing what ridley scott does best and just kind of like planting a bomb inside the story and blowing it to all hell before we really get into it uh, i just want to thank everyone for the response on the don't quit your job video. I really, really appreciate that. Videos like that, I really make them in hopes that they reach the intended audience and that people can really connect and resonate with what I'm saying in those videos. So when that actually happens, it really does bring a lot of joy to my life. And it it's the reason that I started making YouTube videos to begin with. So if you're one of those people that subscribe to me, because of that, then I appreciate you. And to anybody else that's returning, I appreciate you as well. Okay, we got the M4 and the AK Gold. So now we have the Ames or the Ames. You know, not to be somebody that's like, oh man, big things coming, but I got a piece of tech and big things are coming. I got this guy right here, DJI Action 4, just like an action cam, basically. Ever since I started to get over posting fitness content, mostly the running stuff, um, I've always wanted to find a way to like expand on that content. And after talking to a couple friends, uh, they, they gave me a pretty good idea on like how I could uh, like leverage that type of content. Oh my God, I'm horrible. The only thing about, the only thing about like running or fitness content on this channel is that even though I talk about it a lot, I'm not sure how it will like mix with all the commentary content because at the heart of all this stuff, it is, it is gaming related. It's like I'm playing games and just yapping the whole time, but I'm not sure how many people will, uh, who is shooting me? I'm not sure how many people will like be in that Venn diagram, you know, like that, that mixture of audiences. But because of that, that's kind of why I want to do it because at the end of the day, I think, oh my God, accuracy. At the end of the day, I feel like gamers are a demographic that could probably exercise more. A lot of people that do this stuff for a living, especially they are sitting on their ass all day and that's really not good for you. Whether you want to hear it or not, your body is slowly dying the more you take up the majority of your day with just sitting down. I mean, you're going to be dying no matter what. That's, you know, just part of living a finite life. But at the end of the day, the more movement, uh, probably the better, to a certain point at least. People are impressionable. And especially when it comes to ga the gaming scene, there are a lot of people that have a ton of influence that aren't really leading the greatest examples. Now, grinding out videos at the detriment of your health is not really the uh, 
type of person that anyone should aspire to be because no matter how much money you get from grinding out videos and how many followers you have at the end of the day your health should be the number one priority i am speaking in some absolutes right now which i generally try not to do apparently there was like a big bug with double xp where it's like most people or really like anybody wasn't getting proper double xp maybe they were even getting like half of the amount that they would normally be getting so because of that treyarch has extended the double xp weekend to uh november 5th and i'm pretty sure it was only supposed to go until the third or the fourth oh shit I went on my first run in two weeks this morning. One of my buddies who I've known since uh, we were like, I don't know, in like first grade or something. He uh, he hit me up. I just went to his wedding this past summer too. It was crazy. That's such a strange feeling, knowing somebody for your whole entire life and then going to their wedding. But anyway, we uh, went on a trail run this morning. He's trying to get more into running because he's mostly uh, like a mountain biker and just overall cyclist. And... Uh, I enjoy trail running too. So he came over to my neck of the woods and we got a trail run in. I did have to consult with my coach first because my training plan doesn't start until this Monday, the, uh, the fourth, but my coach said it would be a good way to like test how my legs are feeling, especially my hamstring. It felt really good. I just took it super easy. The only thing about these trails is that they are super steep in some areas so there was definitely a lot of uphill with like steps and like root patterns and things like that trail running is fun dude there's something about like having to navigate especially technical trails that is so much different from road running and i'm i'm mostly a road runner so i'm not like hating on it or anything like that but oh my god how did that guy not die you know that feeling when you're driving and you like snap back to it and you don't really remember driving like the past five minutes? That's what uh, that's what road running feels like sometimes. You know, my accuracy is just not there today. Whoa, whoa, see? Nice awareness. Literally a guy right next to me. The difference with trail running is that you're pretty much forced to like pay attention to where you're stepping or you're probably going to come out with an injury. You look 50 feet or so ahead of you and then you look down at your feet to make sure you're not stepping on any like fucked up roots. And then you basically just repeat that over and over again. At least that's what I've done uh, with like the amount of trail running that I've, I've done. Oh my God. I'm still uploading this. I don't care. Nah, man, it's the gun. It's the gun for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I see professional trail runners who are just a couple years older than me or I mean the real champions are like 10 years older than me oh my god that guy's insane and uh it's just it's just so cool to see like the longevity in the sport I think that says a lot about like who can do it and who can like really uh get the benefit from it I mean I think that everybody can benefit from more movement especially more running but when it comes to uh, things like the ultra endurance stuff, I think that a lot of people just don't think that they have the capacity. They're like, they don't have the ability to get good at it or do it. But hey man, the outdoors are for everyone. Just get out there and start moving. You don't need any more of a reason than that. I recently listened to this podcast with this elite endurance guy named Cam Worth. He's from like Tasmania or something. And he's like 44 years old. And if a 44 year old can get like seventh in the Ironman world championship, then what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, and that's not to say you haven't done anything. It just means that like you're capable and anybody that tries to tell you you're not, I mean, you just shouldn't listen to them. They're just, they're just saying bullshit. I have this really bad habit that I picked up in the previous games where they brought diving back where I will go to lay down behind something, but now because you can dive, I will like dive into it and it's not really the greatest habit. What if I fucking 360 off this and then shoot this guy? No, nah, it's not as bad as I thought. Maybe I'm just not doing as well as I thought. I am still positive though. If I've never really felt like I'm special in terms of athleticism or anything like that, then I want to be the guy that tells people they can get stronger. They can run these crazy endurance races like they can do those things that like they are capable 
because I think that, you know, barring some really unfortunate and scarring accident, you're really just a lot of small steps, a lot of work away from, you know, whatever that thing is that you're trying to get good at. Eventually, people are gonna, probably going to get tired of hearing me say a lot of the same stuff over and over again, but hey, that's my thing. I heard this amazing quote from this guy named Derek Sivers, who's sort of, sort of this just like polymath type guy. Here it is. Mastery is the best goal because the rich can't buy it, the impatient can't rush it, the privileged can't inherit it, and nobody can steal it. You can only earn it through hard work. Mastery is the ultimate status. Something like that says a lot to somebody like me because I've never felt like I was particularly gifted at anything. Yeah, I was one of those kids who was always told he was so smart when he was younger. I think that after I got over the head inflation aspect of that, like being a kid who was contrarian because I thought that being contrarian made me sound smart and really like getting into philosophy and actual literature that showed me that, oh, I probably wasn't like a gifted kid. I was probably just curious and I liked being good or sorry, getting good at things that I wasn't really good at. But you know, when you're not good at something, that's really discouraging. And I doubt that I really have to tell anybody that because doing something that you see another person doing, somebody that's really good at it, and that just immense amount of disappointment you get where you're like, wow, this is really hard and I never wanna do it again because I really suck at it. It's like me with aiming in Call of Duty. Honestly, I think the only reason I would want kids is so that I could promote that outlook in my child. Like I want to be able to raise a kid who is curious about the world, is humble in his understanding of himself and others and accepting and you know, all the amazing qualities that I read about in the great people of history. I would love to try and instill that in my kid. Not to make them perfect, but to make them understand that life is going to be full of problems to solve and things to get better at, and it's gonna be a never-ending quest. But that's what makes life so beautiful, the fact that it is a never-ending quest. I made a short the other day talking about how I always read a lot of the same books. Like, I don't increase the amount of books that I've read. I'm not somebody that uh, stacks up like 20,000 books on their nightstand or keeps a list of how many books they've read throughout the year. I used to be that person, but the more that I realize that I can get what I really need from a certain amount of books, if I really pay attention to them, the more I deviated away from having that big stack and instead having a dedicated stack, ones that I could always return to and ones that I can get the most value from because books are this amazing piece of technology. And I know that that might seem counterintuitive to call them technology because we, in modernity, we, we think technology has to be electronic, but there was a time before books, before written word, and everything was just spoken. And can you imagine how insane it would be to live in a world like that? In that video about the books, I likened reading and keeping track of all these books you've read to uh, getting tasks done in life. If you're trying to read all the books, you're just going to end up exhausting yourself. You're never going to read all the books because there are always going to be way more books releasing every single day than you will finish in a day. Much of life and its tasks are like that because there's always going to be laundry to do. There's always going to be uh, garbage to take out. There's always going to be things to do, but you don't have to let that get to you because the sooner you accept that fact, and let that anxiety of all the things that have to be done wash away, the sooner you can realize that you can just put time towards the things that really matter and really, really lean into them. This is what I meant the other day when I said to do things daily-ish as well. So I'm kind of rehashing that idea a little bit, but something that I've learned over the years is that sometimes it's not about the thing that's being said it's about how it's being said and who's saying it a lot of the time i have heard something or the same exact thing from multiple people but i never really understood it it's like a it's like a math problem being explained to you i mean i remember in school like in algebra or geometry something like that i would hear something over and over and over again and i just wouldn't get it i just i, I couldn't understand it and then somebody at some point 
was explaining to me in a different way using a different analogy and it finally all clicked for me and you know that's that's an amazing feeling when something like finally clicks like that and everybody knows how that feels think about every time you don't understand something and then all of a sudden you do understand it it's such a crazy feeling because after you do understand it you don't know what it's like to not understand it and i know that can kind of be a little bit confusing so yeah even if you think that you don't understand something try and come at it from a different angle because you never know it could be the way that it's being said to you it could be the person that's saying it it's really easy to get frustrated when you don't understand something and to just completely give up on it i mean we've all done it with many different things but that doesn't mean that you are condemned to never understand it instead of this diamond camo we got to bring back mw 2019 platinum i don't know if i'm alone in this but i would prefer that over a diamond camo it's all about the shininess dude it's all about how shiny something is that's why in your graphic settings you got to make sure that space screen reflections are dialed all the way to 11. as always thank you so much for all the love and support on the videos it really does mean a lot to me and thank you for 350 subs 350 people that want to hear me yap i love that i appreciate it don't stop searching for that thing and just because you don't really understand something doesn't mean you're never going to understand it beat that in drill it into your head you are capable but capability is nothing without the work that is necessary to make it happen so remember that i'll see you on the next one